And just to all, all the men and women of God in this place, I'm just so grateful and, and godly and happy to be here. Tonight is, is kind of weird for me because uh, I don't have a message uh, for a graduating class kind of message. I, I just like to preach, you know. Is that right? So, I mean, if you're looking for some big message to charge these people, if you can't get charged off what I got to say tonight, um, y'all just find another night, I guess. I don't know. But um, if, if I can say anything to the graduating class of uh, this particular uh, ministry school, I think the main thing that I would say to you all, just from one young preacher to another one, the key thing, if you don't remember anything, Remember that the key component to ministry is servanthood. Okay? I'm, I'm going to make that perfectly clear. The key component to any ministry is how good do you serve. I, I've learned something. I'm, I'm a young man, but the Lord has blessed me so in 11 years, it's mind-blowing. I mean, mind-blowing. The Lord's blessed me to be nominated for Grammys and Stellas and Doves, gold records, all kinds of great, great things because of the open doors that God has opened before me. But I believe with all my heart that the reason why God has allowed me to do some of the things that I've done is simply because of my commitment to my home church first. Look, I can't get no help now. You know, help. I'm up here today. I am the youth and young adult pastor at my home church. I am the youth and young adult pastor at my home church. Every Wednesday night, I am at home to teach my young people Bible class. Every third Sunday, every third Sunday, I'm at home preaching to my young people. My pastor has a copy of my schedule. Last year, I did 256 dates. This year, I'm going to do some 225 dates. He has a copy of my schedule. Yes, I am a man. I am a grown man. I have three children. I have a wife. I have a house. I have two car notes. So I am a man. But that ain't even the issue. The issue is, is I've learned how to serve the set man of our house. I want y'all to hear me. He has my schedule. If he needs his car washed, I wash it. If he needs his clothes taken to the cleaners, I take them. If he needs somebody to carry his Bible, I'm carrying it. He doesn't have to look for me to see where I am. He doesn't have to try to find me. He doesn't have to pick up the phone and say, Marvin, you've been gone for five weeks. You ain't came home. I'm a tithe and offering giver consistently. I'm just trying to help somebody. Because we have great aspirations and we want to do phenomenal things for the kingdom of God. But how do you expect God to bless you in your own when you're not faithful in another man's? So if you don't remember anything this young boy from Grand Rapids, Michigan said, remember this, that the key to you going up in ministry and the key to you fulfilling the purpose of God for your life is learning how to serve and be faithful to this house first. That's the key. Now, I just had to drop that little nugget on y'all because I, I just want you all to understand that this is just, of course, the congratulations and, oh my God, you know, uh, the valedictorian and all of the, it looks so wonderful. Y'all got y'all collars on. But see, now y'all, y'all don't know, y'all don't even realize what you about to get into now. See, yeah, you, you're on cloud nine now. I know, I know you feeling real good right now. You are, you are excited. You know, because I'm going to tell y'all something. When I walked up here, Today, I was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. But then God brought back to my memory of how many toilets I had to clean at our church before he put me up here. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. He, he started bringing back to my remembrance how, how many hospital visits and, and things I had to do before I got here. He brought back to my remembrance how many nights I just had to sit up and, and just pray and fast and call upon God with all of my might before I got here. I want you to understand that 
y'all, y'all, if y'all, you, if you didn't know what you were getting into, I want you to know that you just enjoy the night. Have fun. Take pictures and smile, boo. Take pictures and smile, bro, man. Because this is about to straight up end. Mm -hmm. I know y'all ain't gonna say man. See, they, they had y'all in the back and they telling y'all about, you know, Old Testament lit, I took all that, and New Testament lit, and then you had to learn all of this stuff, and that was all great. And y'all was like, ooh, ah, my goodness, learning all the historical aspects of what uh, the Bible teaches you, and you excited now because you got the wealth of the Word on the inside of you, but I want you to understand that, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I'm going to leave you alone, I'm going to leave you alone. But Lord Jesus, keep us near the cross. I just, why y'all didn't tell them what they was getting into? Didn't nobody tell them? Uh, turn in the word of God tonight to the gospel according to St. Matthew. Lord, help me. Y'all, yo, they don't know. They don't know, Pastor. They don't know. They look so good in them collars. That'd probably be the last time they wear them for a while, you know that? <laughs> oh, Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 9. I wonder if you would rest your feet in reverence to the reading of the Word. And if I could just get a little more monitor. These things, just a little, because these things are so big, I'm scared what they're going to do. Yeah. Beat them, blew me back into that brick wall, okay? <laughs> Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 9. I tried to get away from this. I've ministered this before, but this is where God took me in prayer in my room tonight. I'm going to start reading at the 20th verse. Are you there? At chapter number 9 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, 20th verse, it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned him about it when he saw her. He said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith have made thee whole. And that woman was made whole from that hour. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And that woman was made whole from that hour. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue. Touch somebody, say an issue. Of blood, 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself. Touch somebody else and say, she said within herself. I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith have made thee whole. And that woman was made whole from that hour. I, I, I could, if I would tonight, I, I would like to draw my subject from the first uh, clause of the 20th verse up until that comma where it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased, with an issue of blood 12 years. I, I just want to talk to you all tonight from the subject of issues. Tap somebody, tap them and look them in the face and smile at them and say, neighbor. neighbor. Some of y'all looking at me, I said, touch the person next to you and say, neighbor. neighbor. I don't mean to get into your business, but I wonder, do you have any issues? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lord, I, wish, I just wish I had a few more folk to help me. Just look at the other person next to you and tell them, say, neighbor, I, I, I'm going to try not to bother you no more tonight. But I wonder, do you have any issues? You may be seated in the presence of my Lord. Understand, if you will, my brothers and my sisters, that when you begin to look in this uh, specific book in the Word of God, specifically pertaining to this particular time in the life of our Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, during this time in his life, he was literally flowing in the very height of ministry, working and or doing that which he was placed on this earth to do 
that was fulfilled the purpose of God for his life by healing the sick and doing miracles and ultimately dying on the cross so that you and I as individuals could walk in the newness of life having the ability to put on his righteousness because there is nothing good within our flesh as it is. When we begin to read the word of God that there are so many phenomenal miracles that Jesus had wrought in his life but the fact of the matter is is that one of the most phenomenal miracles that immediately comes to mind is found in the eighth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew because the Bible begins to tell with us that he deals with a man or is confronted with a man who is demonically possessed he has legions of demons in him the Bible says that this man confronts Jesus and he confronts the man and that Jesus literally lays hands upon the man and allows and or rebukes the demons that are within him allow them to enter into swine and then soon after the swine go ahead and commit suicide the, the Bible says that after this particular occurrence had happened in the life of Jesus the Bible says that Jesus enters into a boat and that he sets sail on the Sea of Galilee kept traveling back indeed to the headquarters city of Capernaum upon his arrival on the shore if you will the Bible begins to share with us that he is immediately confronted by a whole host of individuals. These individuals were beseeching, they were asking, they were begging, they were pleading that Jesus would lay his hands upon them wherein they could receive the miracles and or the deliverances that they needed in their lives. You gotta go with me now because we, we're even gonna go deeper into the text and we want you to look in the text if you will. You, you must understand that Jesus comes upon the shore. He gets off of the boat, he and the disciples, and the Bible says that immediately a host of people began to press in on the master. They began to push, they began to shove, they began to scream, they began to holler, trying to get his attention in hopes that he would lay his hands upon them wherein they could receive the miracle and or the deliverances that they needed in their lives. Even, even if you begin to look in the text, if you begin to listen to what's going on around the atmosphere of the text, you can hear the people as they begin to scream at the top of their voices, trying to get the attention of the master. I, I can hear them as they begin to scream aloud, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. They're trying to get his attention. So you must understand that during this particular time, there had to be mass hysteria. There were a whole lot of people that were trying to get the attention of the master. And it's so mind-boggling to me because these people are pressing in. They're pushing. They're shoving. They're trying to get the attention of the master. And then the Bible says that someone shows up on the scene that should not have been there. There was a particular man, the Bible says, that shows up on the scene. And the Bible tells us that his name is Jairus. The Bible says that Jairus shows up on the scene and that he falls at the feet of Jesus. And then he begins to have a conversation with the master. Notice what the conversation consisted of, my brothers and sisters. He goes on and begins to tell Jesus his plight because he, he had a particular situation that was happening in his life. He, he tells Jesus, he says, listen, Jesus, I, I have this daughter. And the fact of the matter is, is that she is extremely sick. And I believe that if you were to come and to lay hands upon my baby girl, I believe that the healing that she needs in her life, that she's definitely going to get it. I believe that if you were to come to my house and if you were to lay hands upon my baby girl, the deliverances that she needs in her life, they're definitely going to come into fruition. I believe that if you were to come and to lay hands upon my baby girl, the healing that she needs to manifest in her life is going to take place. Now, now it is extremely confusing to me, Pastor Twiggs, that the fact that this man, Jay Iris, would even be in the presence of Jesus. 
The reason why this is so peculiar to me because if you know anything about Jairus, you know anything about him, you must understand that Jairus was one of the rulers in the synagogue. And during that particular time, those who were in position of authority, they were plotting, trying to figure out a way to bring Jesus down. So the fact that this man was in the presence of Jesus says a little bit something about him. Well, what does it say, Dr. Sapp? Well, I'm so very glad you asked me that. Because what it says about Jairus, firstly, it says that Jairus, being in the presence of Jesus, even though he was a ruler of the synagogue, him being in the presence of Jesus literally says that Jairus was not concerned about how he was going to be viewed in the eyes of his contemporaries. Y'all ain't going to help me tonight. Those that he worked with, those that he fellowshiped with, those that he saw on a day-to-day -day basis, those that he hung around with on a day-to-day -day basis, those that he served in authority with. He, he was not concerned about how he was going to be viewed in their eyes. It even goes one step further than that. It begins to deal with how J. Iris was not only not concerned about how he was going to be viewed in the eyes of his contemporaries, but also he wasn't concerned about how he was going to be viewed in the eyes of his family. The fact that he was in position of authority, the teachings that he had taught his family, the, the morals that he had instilled in them, him being in the presence of Jesus literally says that he wasn't concerned about how he was going to be looking in their eyes also. But then it even goes one step further. It, it goes on to say that he was even really to turn his back on his own ideologies, the things that he had learned, being a ruler in the synagogue. He was well-versed in the Torah. He was well-versed in the, in the Pentateuch at that time. He understood all of the outward observances of the law. So the fact that he was in the presence of Jesus says that he was literally turning his back upon his friends. He was literally turning his back upon his family. He was literally turning his back on his own ideologies. Why? Because he understood that the only way that he was going to get a breakthrough in his life is that he had to go to where Jesus was. I ain't gonna get no help here tonight. He had to go to where Jesus was. And, and, and God began to blow my mind because he showed me, he said to me, he said, sometimes Marvin, when you really need a breakthrough in your life, sometimes you're going to have to turn your back on some folk. Lord ain't gonna help me here. Sometimes you're gonna have to walk away from individuals. You, you're gonna have to get away from those that you've been hanging around with your cohorts. Sometimes when you nearly need a breakthrough, you're gonna have to get away from your family and your friends. Sometimes when you really need a breakthrough, you're gonna have to even turn your back on your own ideologies, yo, the traditions and things that you have learned as an individual. Sometimes you're gonna have to do what you've never done to get what you never got in order to get the breakthrough that you need in your life. Is anybody in this house today? So, so here, that's a whole other message, but here the Bible begins to blow our minds because it shares with us that this man shows up at the presence of Jesus and the Bible says that Jesus consents and he decides to go to J. Iris' house. Now we got to look at the text again now because y'all got to go with me. So you got to understand what's happening here now. The Bible says that there is Jesus. Watch this. Jesus gets off of the boat and that the disciples are along with him. The Bible goes on to say that the people are pressing in. They're pressing in. They're pressing in. They're pushing and they're shoving, trying to get the attention of the master. So I see Jesus walking next to J. Iris, and I see J. Iris walking next to Jesus. I see the disciples standing all around Jesus, trying to make room for Jesus to go to J. Iris' house. But then I also see the people that are pushing and shoving, trying to get next to Jesus, screaming and hollering at the top of their voices trying to get his attention. So I see Jesus walking next to J. Iris, and J. Iris is walking next to Jesus. I see the disciples trying to keep the people away, but I still see the people pushing and shoving, trying to get to the master. But Jesus is yet and still walking next to J. Iris, but J. Iris has a smile on his face. Why in the world is J. Iris smiling? The reason why J. Iris is smiling is because the healer is on his way to his house. So J. Iris is smiling walking next to Jesus. Jesus is walking next to J. Iris. The disciples are getting 
getting frustrated because the people are pushing and shoving, but the people don't care. They're getting still pushing and shoving. They're trying to get next to Jesus. So Jesus is walking next to Jairus. Jairus is walking next to Jesus. The people are getting upset. They're trying to get closer to Jesus, but the disciples are trying to keep all the people away. But Jesus is getting still walking next to Jairus. Jairus is walking next to Jesus. Now I see Jesus, and I see Jairus, and I see the disciples, and I see the people, but all of a sudden, somebody else shows up on the scene. All of a sudden, somebody else shows up on the scene. But this person that shows up on the scene is a little bit different from all the other ones because all the other ones are pushing and shoving. All of the other ones are trying to get close to the master. But the Bible says that this person comes up from the rear. Uh, I, I can't even see who it is right now. I'm, I'm confused. I don't even know if it's male or female because this person is dodging in between trees and hiding behind rocks and hiding behind different obstacles. She, oh, yep, it's a girl. I see her. I see her now. It's a woman. She, she's trying not to be noticed. Why isn't this woman running up like everybody else? Why isn't she pushing, trying to get to the master? Why isn't she in the press immediately like everybody else? Maybe it's because she understood that in her condition, being out in public, she could be stoned to death. So she had to sneak up from the rear. Why is she sneaking? Why is she hiding? Why is she trying not to be noticed? Maybe it's because she had had an issue she had an issue of blood now you got to understand what an issue of blood is if you will because an issue of blood is when a woman has a hemorrhage in her womb and because of this hemorrhage that is in her womb there is a constant flow of blood from her body and when you begin to deal with this issue you you must begin to look in the, look in the book of Leviticus chapter number 15 because it begins to deal with the two types of issues of blood it begins to deal firstly with the periodic issue of blood and then it begins to deal with the chronic issue of blood now, I'm going somewhere can I teach you a little bit first you got to understand that when a woman had a periodic issue of blood, that is when a woman would go through her monthly cycle. Now, in biblical times, when she would go through her monthly cycle, what she would have to do is once her cycle was completed, she would have to take two turtle doves and or two pigeons, and she would have to go to the temple, and she would have to present it to the priest, and the priest would have to look over to make sure that it was without blemish or without taint, and then she would be able to take it to another priest, and then she would have to offer up a sin offering and a burnt offering before that woman would be pronounced clean. That means every month she had to go back and forth to the temple. Y'all ain't going to go with me here now. There were long lines of women waiting at the temple. Let me go one step further. There were long lines of upset women waiting at the temple to offer up their sacrifice. I can see them right now standing in line. Tell my girl, how long you been here? Girl, I've been here since five this morning. This here don't make no doggone sense. They know we're going to be at the temple every month. They need to have a better line, and we all got to wait here with these dead birds. I can't get no help in here. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody knew her business based upon if she was in line when she was supposed to be. They knew if she was pregnant or not based upon if she was in line when she was supposed to be. They knew if she was pregnant or not and married based upon if she was in line when she was supposed to be. Some of y'all in here ought to be giving God praise right now that you ain't got to go back and forth to the temple because the fact of the matter is a whole lot of y'all would have been busted. I can't get no help now. Yeah, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. So, so, but, but I, 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 as I begin to study this thing, let, let me share something with you. That, that was just for the periodic issue of blood. But then there was something called the chronic issue of blood. And when a woman had a chronic issue of blood, that is when there was a constant flow of blood from her body. And when this woman had a constant flow of blood from her body, she could not be pronounced clean. That means everything about this woman was unclean. 
That means her house was unclean, her clothes was unclean, her whole environment was unclean. Now, let me share something with you a little bit about me, if I can. I'm the type of individual and the type of preacher that if I get confused about something in the Bible, I always go to God in prayer because me and God, we tight like that. And I have a conversation with God. Now, when I go to God, I don't go to God like everybody else goes. Some folk go to God. Whenever they go to God, they so deep. It's our Father God, our Father God. You know, we so deep. But when I want to talk to God, I talk to God just like I'm talking right now. I just be straight up with him. And I went to God when I began to read this thing. I said, God, I'm confused about something. He said, what are you so confused about, son? I said, I'm confused about why you would have me studying in Scripture to find out about chronic issues of blood and periodic issues of blood. I said, God, this don't make no sense to me. He said, Marvin, just read on a little further and you'll see where I'm taking you. And as I began to read on a little bit further, God began to blow my mind because he showed me that not only did women have issues, but men had issues also. I wish I had some Bible readers up in here. Uh, there was something that was called a running issue for a man. And when a man had a running issue, what he would have to do is once his running issue was completed, he would have to take two turtle doves and or two pigeons. He would have to go to the temple and he would have to offer up a sin offering and a burnt offering before he would be pronounced clean. Now, I'm real messed up now. So I went back to God because me and God, we tight like that. And I began to have a conversation with him again. I said, God, he said, yes, Marvin. I said, I do not understand why you got me studying upon chronic issues of blood, periodic issues of blood, and running issues for a man. I said, this doesn't make any sense to me. And you know what he told me? He said, read on a little bit further, son, and you'll see why I'm taking you. And as I begin to read on a little bit further, God literally began to blow my mind. He showed me something in Scripture that really messed me up. He showed me that when a woman had a chronic issue of blood, and when a man had a running issue of blood, a running issue rather, that these were literal types of STDs and or sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, not y'all, that's how I was. So I went back to God because me and God, we... I knew I had somebody who was going to help me. We type like that. And I began to have a conversation with him again. I said, God? He said, yes, Marvin. I said, I'm confused about something. He said, what are you so confused about? I said, God, why in the world would you have me studying Scripture to find out about sexually transmitted diseases or STDs? I said, God, if I wanted to know about an STD, I could have went on the Internet, typed in STD, and would have got over 40,000 different sites on STDs. I said, God, if I wanted to know about an STD, I could have went down to Planned Parenthood, stopped at the front desk, asked just girl a brother man to give me some literature on STDs and they would have given me all of the literature that I needed I said God why in the world do you have me studying on STDs in Scripture he said something to me that messed me up he said the reason why I got you studying on STDs in Scripture Marvin he said because that's the problem that many of the Saints have in the body of Christ I said, wait a minute. I said, God, I know you don't expect me to stand up in the pulpit and tell folk that they got STDs. He said, that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to tell them that they got STDs. I said, God, there are going to be a whole lot of folk that are going to be offended if I tell them that they got STDs. He said, I don't care who you offend. I want you to tell them that they got STDs. TDs. I said, God, but I'm going to the potter's house, and this is my first time preaching there, God, and I don't want to shut the door on my face. He said, don't sweat it, son. Bishop got your back. He said, tell them that they got STDs. I said, God, you want me to tell these folk that they got sexually transmitted diseases? He said, no, that's not what an STD is. He said, an STD is a spiritually transmitted disease. Uh, I wish I, I, I know y'all got nervous. I know. And I looked at God and I said, God, break it down. It's all right now. Y'all, y'all, I know y'all was nervous. I said, God, break it down to me. And he said, Marvin, I want you to look at that woman with an issue of blood, if you will. And he said, now, when a woman has an issue of blood, not only was she unclean as an individual, not only was an issue of blood in biblical times grounds for divorce, but when a woman had an issue of blood, she was unable to conceive a child. In other words, if a man was to come in contact with her, 
and wants to be intimate with her and wants to place a seed on the inside of her, that seed would not be able to connect itself to an egg and that egg would not be able to connect itself to her womb. Why? Because the seed that, would, that was placed on the inside of her would be washed out of her because of her issue. I said, God, what are you trying to tell us here? He said, that's the problem with that many of the saints have now. He said, I've tried to impregnate you with vision. I tried to impregnate you with a zeal and a desire to know me. He said, I've come in contact with you and I've been intimate with you. And I've tried to put some things on the inside of you. I tried to show you that where you are right now is not where you're going to end up. But you're just going through this situation. But you're so busy focusing on your issue. Everything that I place on the inside of you just washes right out of you. You're so busy focusing on what you're going through that you can't see that I'm able to deliver you out of whatever situation that you face in your life. Tap somebody and tell them, change your focus. Yeah, you're so busy looking at what you're going through, so busy concentrating on where you are that you can't see that God is working a thing out on your life that's going to literally blow your mind. See, I I've learned something, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. I learned, I've learned that in my walk with God that you just don't go through just to go through. In other words, things just don't happen just to happen. But the fact of the matter is that your steps have been ordered. Tap somebody say they've been ordered. It's not a mistake that you're going through what you're going through. And I found out something, and if you get this in your spirit, it will change your life. The only reason why the devil is causing so much trouble in your life right now is because somehow, some way, he done peeked into your future and he sees what God's about to bring you into. And he's trying to frustrate you in, in missing out on the promise of God for your life. But tap somebody and tell them the devil is a lie. I'm not going to miss out on what God has for me. I'm not going to fall susceptible to my trouble, but I'm going to stand firm in the midst of it all because if God be for me, he's more than the world. Yes. But because of our issues, we're so busy focusing on what we're going through. We're not able to carry that which God has placed on the inside of us and bring it to term and birth it into the earth as he is destined for us to do. We're so busy focusing on our problems that every time God impregnates us with something, we end up losing it and or miscarrying it. But the fact of the matter is, is that now you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that now you have the wherewithal to be able to carry that which God has placed on the inside of you. And you need to understand the reason why you're going to bring it to fruition is because you realize that all the devil is doing is blowing smoke at you, trying to get you to fold up under the pressure. But tap somebody and tell them this ain't the time nor the place to give up. You got to learn how to stand firm in the midst of your trouble, stand firm in the midst of your crisis, knowing that God is going to bring you through whatever trouble or trial you face. I wish I had a witness in here. The Bible begins to blow our minds because it begins to share with us something that is extremely profound. The Bible begins to tell us here in our text that this woman suffered with an issue of blood for 12 long years. And then the Bible begins to tell us that rather than her condition getting better, it began to get even worse. And one thing I began to look at this text and I, I passed the hill, I began to think that this was going to be a condition that this woman was going to have to live with for the rest of her life life because you do understand that there are some things that God places in your life that he ain't going to deliver you from. Uh, Y'all missed it. I saw it go right past you. Uh, there was a conversation that went on between God and this certain man in Scripture. The Bible says that this man went to God three times and asked him to remove this particular thorn from his flesh. And God told him, he said, no, I'm not removing the thorn because my grace is sufficient. And then he said, that's why I can glory in my infirmities because of the fact that when I'm weak, that's when I'm made strong. You got to understand that there are some things that God is going to leave in your life and the reason why he's going to leave them in your life because he recognizes that if he was to take them out of your life many of you would leave here and never come back many of you would walk out of here and never return back to the church because you would feel like you don't need God to do nothing in your life anymore that's why you're still going through what you're going through because the fact of the matter is is he's left it there to keep you humble he's left it there to keep you on your face he's left it there to keep you on your knees many 
Many of y'all wouldn't even talk to God if you didn't go through some hell every now and then. Many of you wouldn't even call upon God if you didn't have no pressure and no stress in your life. So what he has to do is he has to allow it to stay there just so he can have a little talk with you every now and then. I wish I had a witness in here. Look at what the Bible begins to tell us, if you will. The Bible says that this woman suffered many physicians, and rather than her condition getting better, it grew worse. But as I begin to read this text, I began to get a little more encouraged because God showed me something in the text that blew my mind. He showed me, he said, Marvin, you need to see that for every STD, there is an antidote. Tell somebody and tell them, say, there's an antidote to your STD. Uh, Lord, help me up in here. I wish I had somebody that would tell, tell the person next to you there is an antidote to your STD. And the Bible begins to tell us, if you will, what the antidote is because as you begin to read the word of God, the Bible says that she suffered many physicians and rather than her condition getting better, it grew worse. But soon after this, it transitions and it shifts. For it says, if you will, that this woman heard that Jesus was on his way. You need to understand that when you want to get a breakthrough in your life, the only way you're going to be able to get a breakthrough in your life is you're going to have to hear the right stuff. Uh, tap somebody and tell them you got to hear the right stuff. The Bible begins to let us know in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. In other words, I told the folk on this morning that when you really want to be able to back the devil up off of you, the way that you back the devil up off of you is you got to get the word on the inside of you. But the reason why you need the word, because it's the word of God that begins to build your faith as an individual and will sustain you when it looks like everything around you is sinking sand. You can stand on the word of God in the midst of whatever the crisis, in the midst of whatever the trouble, in the midst of whatever the situation may seem to be, because of the fact is this, that God's word is going to stand forever. Everything else may fall, everything else may fade, but the word of God is what you you can stand on in the midst of whatever trouble you're in and or trial. You got to learn how to hear the right stuff. This woman heard that Jesus was on his way. And not only did she hear the right stuff, if you will, but the second thing that this woman did, if you will, is not only did she hear the right stuff, but she began to confess to herself. Tap somebody and tell them you got to confess to yourself. The Bible begins to tell us that she began to confess to herself. How did she confess to herself, Marvin? Well, I'm so very glad you asked me because the Bible says that after this woman heard that Jesus was on his way, she began to say within herself. In other words, the reason why she said it within herself, because she didn't have nobody else to talk to. The reason why she didn't have nobody to talk to, because she had an issue, and her issue kept her isolated and away from other individuals. You got to understand that there are some things that you're going to go through as an individual that are so personal that you're not going to be able to confide in nobody about what you're going through. So what you're going to have to learn how to do is you're going to have to learn how to tap into yourself, and you're going to have to confess to yourself. Tap somebody and ask them, have you talked to yourself? lately? Have you had a conversation with yourself lately? No, you're not crazy. you got a whole lot of sense. But every now and then, you just got to have a conversation with yourself and pull yourself together and stop looking for people to validate and to encourage you. But you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Uh, I wish I had a witness up in here. You got to learn how to encourage yourself. You got to learn how to tell yourself things are going to get better, even when it don't look like it's going to get better. You got to learn how to tell yourself you're coming out of this, even when it don't look like you're coming out of this. You got to learn how to tell yourself I'm going up and I'm not going down, even when it don't look like you're going up. See, I, I got some news for y'all. You need to understand that life and death is in the power of your tongue. In other words, because you are a holy Ghost filled believer, when you open up your mouth, destiny is released in the words that you speak. That's why you shouldn't say anything if you ain't got nothing to say. That's why I don't tell folk that I'm broke when I don't have no money. I'm just in between blessings, waiting on the blesser to bless me one more time. Tell somebody to tell them change your vocabulary. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what some of y'all got to do. You got to change your vocabulary. The reason why some of y'all still going through the hell you going through, because every time you open up your mouth, it's gloom, doom, and discouragement. But the devil is a liar. I'm not speaking and spitting no more venom on my situation. If I can't speak life, I won't say nothing at all. Uh, I wish I had some help here. Tap somebody and tell them you got to confess to yourself because life and death is in the power of your tongue. But not only did this woman hear that Jesus was on his way, not only did she hear the right stuff, if you will, not only did this woman begin to confess to herself, but the third thing that this woman did really blessed me, if you will. The Bible says, watch this, it says that this woman decided when she was going to be healed. Y'all missed it. I saw it go right past it. Not only did this woman begin to confess to herself, not only did she hear the right stuff, but she decided when she was going to be healed. The Bible says that she heard that Jesus was on his way. And when she heard that he was on his way, she began to say within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, that is when I'm going to be made whole. Y'all missed it. Let me say it one more time. She began to say within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, that is when I'm going to be made whole. She didn't say if I can get close enough to him where he can touch me, that is when I'm going to be made whole. But she said if I can get close enough to him where I can touch him, that is what I'm going to be. If I can just get in his presence close enough that I can touch him, that is when deliverance is going. I just wish I had folk that had the mentality. I don't need him to come to my situation. If I could just get in his presence and touch him, my situation would take care of itself. Uh, can I talk to y'all for a little while? Uh, tap somebody and tell her she made the decision. But that ain't what impressed me about this woman, y'all. What impressed me about this woman is not the fact that she decided that she was going to be healed. But what impressed me about this woman is the fact of where she made the decision. She made the decision while she was still at home. Yeah. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. I'm going to say it one more time. I didn't get excited at the fact that she decided when she was going to be healed. But what excited me is where she made the decision. She decided she was going to be healed while she was still at home. Now, I told you in the beginning of this message that her home was a constant reminder of her present state and her circumstances. In other words, everywhere she went in her house reminded her that she was unclean. And even though she was in the mess, the mess was not in her. Oh, uh, Lord, y'all ain't going to walk with me now. I, I wish I had some. I'm, I'm so glad y'all here. Uh, even though she was going through the trouble, the trouble was not in her. In other words, she didn't wait until she got in the presence of Jesus to make her proclamation. But she made the proclamation while she was still at home in her mess. And see, that's the problem that a whole lot of y'all got. Y'all trying to wait till y'all get to the potter's house to have something to give God some glory about. The praise team got to praise you happy. The choir got to sing you happy. Bishop got to preach you happy. But you need to make a decision before you leave your house. I don't know what the preacher going to preach. I don't know what the choir going to say. I don't know what the praise team going to praise. But I've been going through hell all week long. And I need a word. I need a word. Uh, can I preach a little while up in here? Uh, so you got to understand, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, not only did this woman begin to hear the right stuff, not only did this woman begin to confess to herself, and not only did this woman decide when she was going to be healed, but the last thing that this woman did, if you will, is the Bible says she begins to put her faith into action. Not only did she hear that Jesus was on his way, not only did she begin to confess deliverance over her own life, not only did she decide the fact that she was going to be healed, but the last thing that this woman did is she began to put her faith into action. How then, Dr. Sapp, did this woman begin to put her faith into action? The way that she began to put her faith into action, my dear brothers and my dear sister, is she decided to leave her house. Tap somebody and tell them you got to leave your house. 
You must understand that our house was a constant reminder of her present state and her circumstances. Her house reminded her that she was in a mess. In other words, everywhere she looked in her house reminded her that she was unclean. When she went to her bathroom, she saw that she was unclean. When she looked in her cupboards, she saw that she was unclean. When she went to her closet, she saw that she was unclean as an individual. Everything around her reminded her of how bad her plight was. In other words, she had to leave that which she constantly looked at that constantly reminded her of who she was in her present state. You got to understand, beloved, it, that in order for you to get a breakthrough sometimes you got to leave the thing that reminds you of your present state and or circumstance. This woman made a decision if you will in her leaving her house she decided that I'd rather die on my way to my miracle than to live another day in the condition that I'm in. This woman made a decision she said in so many words I'm sick and tired of being in the condition that I'm in right now. And that's the question that I got for somebody tonight. Are you sick and tired of being in the position that you're in right now? Are you tired of going through the same old thing over and over again? Are you tired of feeling hopeless and helpless in the midst of your struggles and your stresses? Are you tired of having to deal with this mess that you're dealing with? Well, God told me to tell you, you got to get up from that house that you're in and you got to press towards where Jesus is. See, the house, you need to understand that you can go through so much stuff for so long that you begin to get comfortable with your pain. Oh, uh, y'all don't like me in here now. Some of you all, the reason why you're still going through what you're going through, because you've been going through it so long, you didn't got comfortable with it. And you think that if you were to ever get delivered out of this situation, that something worse is going to come to your situation or house. But you got to understand, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, you got to understand that in order for you get delivered like God wants to bring you out, you got to leave your house. The Bible declares that this woman makes a decision. She decided, if you will, to leave her house. And then the Bible begins to blow our mind here now. Because this woman now, against all odds, she's decided to leave her house. For her house was her sanctuary. Her house was a place of tranquility. Even though it wasn't a peaceful situation, the fact of the matter is, is that it was yet and still safe. She didn't have to worry about nobody coming and trying to kill her as long as she stayed in her house. She didn't have to worry about nobody trying to stone her as long as she stayed in her house. But this woman made a decision and she said, I'm leaving my house because I'm tired of going through what I'm going through and by any means necessary I'm going to get what God said I can have. Look at what the Bible begins to tell us here now. I'm trying to get to my close if y'all praying with me. The Bible begins to tell us here now if you will that this woman leaves her house and uh, the fact of the matter is is that she's on her way uh, to where Jesus is uh, but on her way to Jesus the Bible begins to blow our minds uh, because it begins to tell us that before she gets to Jesus uh, the Bible says that she's confronted by the press now I got to stop right there for a few minutes and I, I got to deal with the press for a few minutes because you need to understand that the press was in her life in order to bring about discouragement in her life. And when she got to the press, the devil hoped that she would turn around and go back home. He hoped that she would be so frustrated by all of the people that were around Jesus that she would just decide, I might as well go back to my house and live in the condition that I'm in before folks see me out here and stone me to death. But this woman, she got to the press and I thought she should have turned around in the beginning. I thought she should have threw in the town in the beginning. I thought she should have said I quit in the beginning. But God began to blow my mind, if you will. Because God began to show me that this woman had a revelation. She had a revelation about her situation. And she made a decision. She said, I'm too close to what God said I can have to turn around and go back home. And see, that's what God told me to tell somebody. He told me to tell you, you might have been going through hell. You might have been going through all 
kind of trouble. You might be going through all types of trial, but you're too close to what God said you can have to turn around now. Tap the person next to you and say, neighbor. Tell them, say, neighbor. I'm too close to what God said to turn around now. I wish I had some help in here. Look at what the Bible says. As we begin to look in the Word of God, the Bible literally begins to blow our minds because God begins to show me here now that this woman is in the press. The enemy put the press before her in order to make her be frustrated in her walk. You got to understand that just because you spoke the Word over your life, the devil ain't just going to allow you just to get the promise of God for your life. But you got to understand, my brother and sister, that you might be confronted by some opposition before you get what God says you can have. And as I begin to read the Word of God, the Bible begins to blow our minds here now because the Bible begins to share with us that this woman comes in contact with the press. And I thought in the beginning that the press was going to utterly destroy her and annihilate her. I thought that in the beginning the press was going going to be the thing that takes her out but God began to blow my mind he said because Marvin what I'm about to do is I'm about to turn the whole purpose of the press around in other words the enemy meant it for your bad but I'm about to turn it around and I'm about to work it out for your good my question then becomes how can the press be good it doesn't make any sense to me the press is there to frustrating me. The press is there to make me feel bad. Well, how then the press can be good? God began to blow my mind then because he showed me the reason why the press is in her life right now. Because in the beginning, the press was there to discourage her. But now the press is in her life to build up her strength. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. The press is in her life to make her stronger why does she need to be stronger because when God gives her her miracle he wants to make sure that she has enough strength to hold on to it that's why God sent me here to tell you keep on pressing because the more you press the stronger you gonna get tell them say keep on pressing because the more you press the stronger are you going to be? And when he gives you your miracle, the devil's not going to be able to take it from you. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, keep on pressing. Because the more you press, the more zeal you're going to get. The more you press, the stronger you going to feel. Keep on pressing. Can I preach? I said, can I preach? I said, can I preach? This woman began to press. Understand, if you will, that when she got to the people, I believe that this woman had to press through all kind of folk. She had to press through people that had been lying on her. She had to press through people that had been ridiculing her. She had to press through people that had been backstabbing her. But she kept her own pressing. She wasn't worried about public opinion. All she knew is she needed a breakthrough. That's what God told me to tell somebody. When you get in your press, sometimes you're going to have to press through folk lying. But keep on pressing. Sometimes you're going to have to press through folk ridiculing you. But keep on pressing. Sometimes you might have to press through folk dogging you. But keep on pressing. Make up in your mind. By any means necessary, I will give what God said I can have. Say it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She began to press. The Bible says that when she got to Jesus, 
She reached out, touched the hem of his garment. The Bible says that she was healed. Now, I got to ask the question, how did she know that she was healed? She didn't have time to go behind no tree to check herself over. How did she know that she was healed? She didn't have nobody to hide it and look at herself. But the reason why she knew, can I tell you how she knew it? Because before she left the house, she got a revelation. And when she touched Jesus, she received a manifestation. I wish I had somebody that would get a revelation that God is about to bring you out. He's about to deliver you. He's about to set you free. Sire! Sire! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't get excited at the fact that this woman received a healing. Can I tell you what excited me? The next verse says that Jesus asked a question. I feel a little Baptist in here now. Jesus asked a question now. He said, well, y'all, I need to know who touched me. The disciples looked at you, been pushing and shoving you. How can you ask us, virtue? But this time, somebody pulled something out of me that I did not release. That's the kind of faith you need. You need the kind of faith that when you get in his presence, you get, what do you need? I wish I had something true. It's in your reach. Now deliver us. Tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor. Tell us a name. Whatever you need, it's in your well, name. Somebody in here, never. When you're gonna bring me out, God, when you touch him, it will dry up. Say Oh, yeah, yes. Ooh. Uh, but before I take my seat, uh, I just want to drop one more mind blowing. Uh, is that Jesus uh, was on his way uh, to J. Iris' house? Uh, so, in other words, uh, it was J. Iris' uh, turn to receive a miracle. Uh, it wasn't about that woman. Uh, but one thing I learned. Uh, is that if you've got the kind of faith, uh, it doesn't make a difference uh, who's in front of you. Uh, whatever you need, uh, whatever you need, uh, if you just run up on him, uh, you don't have to be next in line. Just run up on Jesus. Uh, it may not be your turn, but it'll be your time. Tap somebody, tell them say name. Uh, it may not be your turn, but it's show your time. Time now. Just look at somebody and tell them it's my time now. My time now. It's my time now. Listen. If you are the boko shit. Is there anybody feeling something here? I, I promise you he's in the building. If you just reach up and touch him, you can get whatever you need. If you just reach up and touch him, reach up by faith. Pull down what you
at your knee. Pull it down, pull it. Pull it down, pull it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Pull it down, pull it down. Pull it down, pull it, pull it, pull it. Pull it down, pull it down. 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 Pull it down. Listen. I got to close. I gotta let y'all go home. Oh my God, get up on Koshe. Yeah, no, they get up on Koba. I get up, I say. Oh, that's it. I'm sorry. See, see, when I'm at home, every now and then, something just, when you're a guest at folks' houses, you don't act like you would act at home. Ah, my feet get, y'all better pray. My feet. And it's all dried up now. It's all dried up now. It's all dried up now. It's all dried up. Lift up your hands with a heart of thanksgiving. Oh, I will bless thee. Oh, no. when my hands are lifted up, oh, help me, help me sing it, y'all. Well, I... 